What's going on, folks? It's your buddy, Dave Mate, doing a little discussion over here at Mind Pedals. We haven't had, uh, I guess what you could call a podcast in years on Mind Pedals. Um, so I figured, hey, let's make a little podcast. Let's do a little recording. Let me just freestyle, talk about some, uh, just some things on my mind. Uh, I also want to address a question from my friend over in uh, UK. So we'll just tie that all in and uh, we'll just record and see what happens. So lately, I've been thinking about the mind, how the mind works, society. You guys know my, my themes of the mind, society. But for, let's say, about 10 years or so, I've been very interested in Eastern philosophy, metaphysics. Those of you that have watched my earlier videos, most of which I've taken down on YouTube, over 350 videos, um, you know that I started talking about Eastern philosophy several years ago. Uh, it's been an ongoing study for me. Um as well as technology uh, ever since I was 12 I really got into technology and I studied it self studied it and it's something that's never left me uh, pretty much all my uh, ventures online and little businesses relate to the internet in some way relate to technology in some way um, so when I put technology and I put metaphysics metaphysics together I begin to see that one can explain the other and the other could explain another they explain each other so one could look at the mind and say well the mind is a computer and there's many programs running on a computer such as Adobe Photoshop Final Cut Pro, Chrome Browser, Safari, many, many programs. And the more programs that you run on your computer, the harder the computer has to work, the more processing power is consumed, and the slower the computer becomes. The computer becomes tired, the computer becomes weak, the, the computer becomes uh, potentially uh, infected by viruses. Well, the mind works exactly in the same fashion. Every thought process could be thought of as a computer program running on your mind. And the more thoughts that are going through your head, the more emotions, the more feelings, anxiety, love, hate, depression, sadness, uh, exhilaration. These are all programs. And one needs to be very careful not to overdo their mind with too many programs. The more programs, the less powerful you will be. When is the computer running the best? The computer is running the best when it's able to allocate its random access memory, its RAM, on one particular, one particular objective. Now, of course, the computer could do many things at once. It could run many programs. But... When it's running one program alone, it's always working most efficiently. It's always working to its maximum capacity. Well, the same thing with the mind. We have to be cognizant of running too many programs and just getting bogged down to the point where nothing's happening, to the point where we lose track of reality. So computers could be hacked, viruses could take over, so can our mind, our mind could be hacked. Depression is a, is a hacking of the mind. Sadness is a hacking of the mind. Anxiety, hate, jealousy, envy, these are all viruses that have spread throughout the circuits or the neural nets of the mind. And once they enter, they could destroy, wreak havoc, run amok. So we must run antivirus software on our mind. 
We must press pause and clear out the mind. This is where meditation comes into play. This is where experimenting with various plants that have certain influences on the mind that allows the mind to escape, so to speak. Not escape in this negative sense where you're running away from something, but escape in the sense of taking a break from the routines. Certain plants are here to help us do that, I believe. We must take time to reflect and contemplate on everything that's going on in our life. Just as the computer, we must run cleaning programs sometimes that take all those little fragments, all those little files that we thought that were erased, but they weren't. They were just squashed and broken up into pieces. We must run programs to clean those certain files out. Same thing with the mind. Same thing with the body. So a friend of mine, uh, he wrote me this letter. From time to time I get letters from people. Very flattering. Thank you guys. Um, you know, people asking for my assistance uh, to kind of pick my brain about certain things. I don't mind. That's fine. But remember, you are the ultimate source. You are the ultimate arbiter of what must occur, what change must take place in your life. Nobody else could be the judge and the executioner of anything else in your life except yourself. So keep that in mind when you ask for advice. So he was talking about a girl that he was with and uh, he was saying, you know, Dave, I don't know how to get this girl's... Uh, I broke up with her or something happened. I just can't get her off my mind. You know, I'm depressed about it. How do I just remove this painful memory? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky, but it's also ridiculously simple. And 10 years ago, I wouldn't have spoken like this, but you kind of have to look at your mind as, or better yet, you have to look at emotions as just things that aren't real. They're just not real. And yes, emotions are tools. They do serve a purpose. You know, if there's a bear chasing us, it's great to be scared and run away. Uh, if we burn our finger on the stove, it's great to uh, learn this uh, hazard and be a little cautious and fair fearful, you know, not to do it again. And, you know, to run away if somebody tries to, you know, burn us with something. Yes, emotions have their purpose and we need them and they're a part of humans. They're a part of our uh, human psychology. But what I'm saying is that you have to be the master of your emotions. Most people are their slaves, the slaves of their emotions. Emotions are transient. They're like waves. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. And if you understand that they go up and they go down, then you understand that when times are up, surely it'll go down again and when times are down surely they'll go up again you know I mean these things could even be seen in mathematics statistics you know there we have a concept in statistics called regression to the means everything regresses to its state its natural state so say for instance you know you're playing sports and you just have a phenomenal day say you came back after months of you know resting and you came back you had a phenomenal day on the on the on the court you playing basketball statistically speaking that phenomena will regress back into the natural state back into the natural order you're not always going to do that well you're always going to go back down and then from there you could go back up and then from there you'll go back down there's always this progression. So we have to understand that emotions are the same exact thing. If you understand that, then the times that you are sad, you will learn not to be stuck in that sadness. Equally so, the times that you are happy, you will learn not to get stuck in that happiness. Both are equally dangerous. 
So we have to understand that anytime we're getting stuck on one or the other, which manifests in these sort of negative emotions, jealousy, anger, hate, racism, prejudice, stereotyping, uh, depression, what have you, if we understand that it's not real, that it's just transient, and that it's basically an illusion, then we're able to move on. So I'm not saying don't be sad, don't be angry, don't be jealous, fine. Be those things. Feel them, but do not let them dictate. Give them no power. And what is, is ignored will eventually cease to hinder you, cease to bother you. And then you'll just say, okay, well, this is just a part of the human condition, these emotions. Look at these animals besides these humans. They, they are most likely not stuck in this predicament that we, are, we have found ourselves in. But this predicament has allowed us to do amazing, miraculous things. This ability of free will. So to my friend, just ride the wave. Ride the wave right now, whatever you're going through. Just ride that wave. And just know that you're just riding a wave. And perhaps that wave has crashed, but it'll go back up. And that's just life. Things go up, things go down. Don't take things too seriously. That's kind of what I'm feeling right now to help, help you out. I uh, hope that inspired you. All right, folks. My name's Dave Mate. This has just been a little talk on Mind Pedals, a little podcast. Try to get back in the wave of things over here, my pedals. Of course, I've been drinking Yerba Mate. My little company at uh, circleofdrink.com. Definitely check it out. Try some of this miraculous tea. Amazing health benefits. Gives you clarity of mind. Crispy, clear thoughts all day long. You cannot go wrong. And then you get all the health benefits. You got any disease... Any problems going on in your body, any imbalances, Mate has shown to help a slew of diseases. Not only that, you could just drink it as a regular drink. You're going to feel good. All right, folks. Dave Mate. Have yourself a great night. Salud. Ciao, ciao.